Hello, this is Robert Caudell, and you are listening to Think on This. Today I am reading Titus chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. Okay, so a bond servant is literally a servant bound to their master. It comes from the Greek word doulos, which means slave or servant. It, ha- it has that connotation of being owned by another. But the interesting thing about this word in the New Testament and other places, especially in Paul's writings, is that it usually describes someone who was a servant for Christ. And the implication was Christ owned this person. They were of Christ. Christ was their master. They did his bidding, not their own, not their own, not their own bidding. So it could be argued it was a term of dignity and reverence in that aspect. But we see from the context Paul is referring to a literal servant of a literal owner, a literal master, and what their relationship should look guy look like. Um, and Paul says a servant should be submissive. If someone in that time was enslaved to another, Paul said the best thing that they can do is submit. He said in everything. So that meant whatever their master's bidding was, they were to do it. And Paul said they needed to be well-pleasing. They were to make their masters happy and pleased with the work they did. They were not to be argumentative. They should not antagonize or rebel against their masters. Pilfering. This means to abandon or set apart. It could mean Paul is saying, don't run from your masters. Or he is saying, don't neglect the responsibility your masters have placed upon you. Don't. Don't abandon your responsibility. Uh, Showing all good faith. Paul says a servant should be faithful. So I want to park on this for a moment because I know in this day and age the word slavery is going to uh, offend some. And and really it it, it is the the slavery in the time of the Civil War and before, you know, what what had happened before the Civil War. That was just evil. That was just awful. And I want to make that perfectly clear. Um, but, you know, we got to deal with it. Slavery and servitude are mentioned in the Bible. It goes without saying, if there was a king or an emperor, there were servants and there were slaves. It was the way of life. People were owned. I'm not going to justify it. I'm not going to argue against what we see here. But what I want to focus on is the fact that Paul, who did not own slaves, who in fact considered himself a servant or a slave for Christ, wore the title with dignity and honor. And what he's telling us, what he's telling his readers, what he's telling Titus, is he is telling those who are bond servants that are Christians, they should let the Christian life manifest itself in their role as a servant or a, or as a slave, depending on how you translate that, translate doulos. But Paul implies that the Christian life displayed through a servant in front of their master will be a testimony that could win their master to Christ. You know, we have a biblical example of this in Paul's letter to Philemon. Um, Philemon was a slave owner, but he was also a Christian. He was one of Paul's converts. Um, Paul had actually witnessed to one of Philemon's slaves who had ran away from Philemon. He had won him to Christ also. His name was Onesimus. Well, after Onesimus' com- uh, conversion, Paul told him, return to Philemon. And he sent, and he also had a letter that told Philemon to receive Onesimus as a brother. So Paul's ultimate goal in that situation was for Philemon to receive Onesimus back as a Christian brother ra- rather than a, a subordinate servant. So Paul, what Paul's aim is, is he, he wants everyone to be treated equally in as, as far as brothers in Christ goes as far as sisters in Christ go Um, but he's also dealing with the culture of that day so he's 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 telling if telling the slaves and the servants show Christ in your life to your masters so that you can win them to Christ and then that changes their heart and hopefully that changes the outcome of how they treat slaves whether or not they want to keep slaves so how do we apply this today now I mean you know we've we've I think for the most part we've did away with slavery in, in in 2019 I know there's trafficking um, there's there's some pretty awful things going on but by and far slavery is considered illegal and atrocious so how do we apply these commands these attitudes well even though we're not necessarily considered slaves if we work for an employer we are the employee we in a way are servants to that employee obviously we are here to make a profit we're here to um, you know 
we're, we're, in a way we work for ourselves. You know, you can leave this job whenever you want. You're not bound by it. You might be bound because you need the job, but you're not bound by it. But while we do our job, while we're under the authority of someone else, and right, and 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 if it needs to be that way. What we need to do is we need to show these characteristics that Paul's talking about to our our superiors. Um, we, if we want to win people to Christ, then we should, like the New Testament bond ser- servant, submit. If we've got a job to do, we should do it. We've been told to do it. Let's do it. Now, seek to please. We should try to please the people that we're um, subordinate to by doing a good job doing a good job um, we, we should not abandon we should not rebel we should not be antagonistic we shouldn't have a cocky attitude where they owe where we feel like we are owed something I mean and maybe we might be we might rightfully so but at the same time Paul says we need to maintain this at this attitude of humility because who who, who is our real master as Christians it's Jesus Christ and there wasn't a there was not a more humble life that had lived. He was the perfect example of humility, and he was our master. And so what we need to do is we need to model Christ's behavior in our life so that we can point people to Christ. He was the perfect master. He was the perfect servant, and he was the perfect God, the perfect man. We need to manifest these characteristics in, that, that were in the life of Christ, and Paul commands that, and he commands that as a means to show what Christ is doing in our heart to those around us and especially those in authority. This is a way we can lead people to Christ. Not in just what we say, but how we act. And that's what's going to make the difference. So, when you think of the word bondservant in the New Testament, you know, look at this passage and look at what, how, how, can, how can we manifest these characteristics in our life so that we can make a difference to those above us and point them to Christ. This is Robert Caudell. Thank you for listening.